do in the classroom, but what do they do after school? Well, a ninth grade girl and her mother were kind enough to invite me into their homes so that I could better understand how they spend their free time and their parents' perspectives on their children's work. Yeah. So, you come home, how much homework do you typically have to do? We don't have that you much You don't homework. have that no. much homework. Yeah. And you're in ninth grade? Yeah. yeah. So, do you expect when you go to upper secondary you'll have more homework? Do you hear yeah. from students yeah, there? I guess. Yeah, I guess. How much? So, how much do you do now? Do you do some every day or not even every day? No. Not even every day. Not even every day. <laughs> and um, so how many hours a week would you say? Three. Three hours a week? Three or four hours a week? Yeah, about that. Finnish education system, way outperforming every other country. How do you understand that as both a teacher and a parent? A big part of it is that we take care of those children that are not doing so well at school. So we have got very qualified special education. Early interventions we hear. Yes, we try to find out what's the problem behind the learning problems mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because often it's something that we can avoid by uh, teaching in different way. Mm. We are in our class, so we had a theme day in school. What was the theme? Uh, we, we are mafia. mafia uh -huh. family. I, I kind of guess. Yeah. Yeah. So also homework. I'm not concerned about that at all. I've always known that they do their homework. I, I never check if they do. do you it. don't have to check. You don't. No. Uh, do you even ask what's your homework, or how much homework do you have this week? Or? No. Sometimes None of when I try to be a good mom. I had a chance to visit some schools while I was in Finland. The Sipo school was especially interesting. We spent some time in elementary classes, but then we went over to the high school. Now, high school there is grades 10 through 12, and what is particularly interesting about what they call their upper secondary is that students have a choice between a more academic track or a vocational track. About 40%, 45% choose the, the, the non-academic technical track, because they know that's going to prepare them for a good job right out of high school. There's a respect and a dignity about all work in Finland, and what matters most is the skillfulness and intelligence you bring to whatever job you may have. A long time ago I, I went to, to the technical university and I studied uh, uh, electrical engineering and electronics. And after that, I have been working at uh, different companies for 30 years. I wanted to decrease the stress level because I, I was a technical director in a, in a company and, and this is how I did it. I started to teach something I, I have learned. <laughs> one, one big finding was that, uh, that uh, uh, experts don't know how people learn because there are many different understandings. So uh, I'm trying to understand how it really happens in practice. So, yeah. What I like uh, in, in teaching is, is uh, many things. This is uh, uh, demanding, a lot of challenges. Uh, you can see the results. Uh, you have long uh, summer uh, vacations. What else you need? <laughs> uh, in, in practice, all students here uh, may also uh, select courses from, from the academic uh, side. It's possible only, also in the, in the opposite way, even though not many, many are doing that. Directly after uh, basic education, young Finns uh, go to about 45% go to vocational education training. About 50% go to upper secondary general schools. The balance between vocational education and training sector and upper secondary general sector is, is very good for, for, for Finland. And we set a policy target a decade ago for us that, that we should actually have more balanced situation in, in Finland. Reasons behind it there must be actually developments of, of vocational education and training sector. However, there isn't any dead ends nowadays. We have actually made our education system so, so flexible that actually you can continue studies after vocational education and training at universities or you can actually
come back to general education if you want to. So it's very open nowadays. In American schools, technology is primarily introduced as an aid for the teachers' presentations, whiteboards, PowerPoints, and so on. But in Finland, the emphasis is much more on the students using the technology for their learning. How long have you been teaching here in the upper secondary? Uh, 26 years. Oh, just starting then? <laughs> yeah, in, uh, in, in, this, in, that, in that, that same school. Yes. 26 years. That's yes. a long time. Yeah. So, have you seen much difference in the students? Are they different uh, uh, to teach now than when you started? I think uh, students are almost the same, but uh, relationship between uh, students and teachers are better nowadays. In what ways? Uh, we are working together more and more. Oh, that's excellent. Yeah. We just had a nice 25-minute uh, lunch in the school cafeteria, but you told me your class started 25 minutes ago. Yeah. You mean you trust them to work on their own? Yeah, yeah. I trust them to work alone, and uh, they have, you know, deadlines. Yeah. Then they work what they have to do, and they have this learning environment, Moodle, mm -hmm. and they make maps there. And mm -hmm. So and tell us about Moodle. Uh, Moodle is a learning environment. And uh, you can uh, put all kind of material, and you can discuss, and you can evaluate with mm -hmm. Moodle. Mm -hmm. Learning is something uh, to use cultural tools, mm -hmm. all kind of tools. Mm -hmm. If you have a lot of tools, you can learn even more. Mm -hmm. and so it's like an online learning environment. It's online learning environment where they are sharing projects with sharing, one another yes. everything where is you shared, yes. everything is shared they're yes. working on projects together yeah. online yeah. you're giving them lectures online that they can access uh, no, not lectures but you give them problems or challenges yeah yeah that they yeah. have to solve yeah, yeah. so tell us a little bit about the class we're just going to go see uh, it is uh, i think there are some 20 students and what are they going to be working on they're working um, mm, kind of uh, geography study mm -hmm. about african countries okay Hannah, can you tell me what you're working on, please? Um, I'm searching some information about African land, Togo, which is this. Mm -hmm. How much time do you have to work on this project? About five weeks. Five weeks? Just to work on this project? Yes. And you're working alone for five weeks? Yeah. Is that hard? Well, I don't think so. It's actually, I kind of enjoy this. Yeah? I think this is quite fun. Mm -hmm. I have to do something in every every period. category. Yes. Here working on Jimbo's nature map, and I mm -hmm. have to make one map on paper and one map in the internet. Oh, I see. So you're also having to write here um, some answers that the rest of the class will see that yes. will be shared from yes. the software, and other students will comment on your yeah. work. Yes. Yes. Do you find this useful? Would you rather be reading a textbook and taking well, tests? I think this is quite a good way to learn. Use more of your own creativity, your own thinking and your own ideas about how to create an effective yeah. mind map? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Eli se, sitten se laitetaan siihen kopipä, joo, kopioi liitä, ja sitten ok. Ja nyt kun sä meet sinne muulleen ja painat tallenna, niin se tulee. We are studying uh, uh, business marketing, so at, at this moment we are studying the social media marketing, which is a quite new area, you know, no one knows where the marketing in social media is going. So uh, students are actually in the Facebook, which they love, trying to find out different kind of articles, especially on about Facebook and marketing. They are using Wikipedia. It's quite interesting because when you see something new is growing, so you need to go right to it and, and to see where it's going to.
innovation and entrepreneurship education came into our curricula 15 years ago approximately. It should be included in every teaching and every subject. What does it mean to educate an entire country to develop the capacities for innovation? Finland is among the top five countries in innovation, global competitiveness, and entrepreneurship. But yet this country is now asking what I would say are some of the post-industrial questions. Uh, if education is to be something that maybe is for its own sake, to develop curiosity, to develop imagination, to develop uh, social bonding and networks. Uh, what does that mean that we might need to do differently? How do we free up time and space for more exploratory learning, not just transmitting information, but giving young people chances to explore, to experiment, and to create new knowledge and new information? I was 16 when I started my company. We have uh, three full-time, full-timers, so, like I am. So we go to school, but when we are out of school, then we do some jobs and marketing and such. Uh, it specializes in making home computers and mostly, mostly we do gaming computers for kids like us. We know what we want and that's what we do. So uh, this is actually the main site. As you can see, there came my friend and he is eating a motherboard. It's so easy. I can't lose any money, but I can make money if I work hard. Well, if it can provide us when we are graduating and, and don't get any better jobs, then, then it's good that we have somewhere to, to work, somewhere to work. You know, by luck, I stumbled on this student project in one of the schools where students were learning about innovation and entrepreneurship by forming teams that had to produce a new product or service overnight, quite literally. They were spending the night in schools with their teams and with adult chaperones, learning the skills of innovation and entrepreneurship. You know, it's a very rare school in our country that teaches anything like that. We have some schools that do an extraordinary job of giving all students a work-based internship. Some schools that enable students to do what we call service learning, community service. But I think in Finland, these things are far more common Whereas in our country, they are the exception to the rule. Tell us a little bit about this innovation camp. What, what is it about? Well, it's about what is called entrepreneurial. Entrepreneurship? Stuff. Yeah. Okay. And um, um, we're here to, um, how do I say this? Well, people are coming here. Uh, we are forming groups, uh, five, six, seven peoples about in a group and they're going to start a business here. Is it true you're going to be here all night long? Yes, 24 yeah. hours, uh, 26. 26 seconds. hours? Yes. What is the point of being here all night long? It exhausts you to a limit where you really got to push it to the yeah. limit, yeah. Well, if you hang around for 24 hours with the same people over here, well, you learn to know the people that you're working with so you get better teamwork. But teamwork, of course. Yeah. I um, think more freely, not so... More open-minded. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, you have to be really social in these things, really. <laughs> it's, it's not that obvious for everyone. So, well, people may think that you can, uh, well, I can make a company of my own and I can do it all my, by myself. I don't need any help. That's not true. <laughs> you learn it here. Back in the 1970s, Finland realized it really could leave no child behind because every child was needed to be a part of the greater wealth of the country. So what have you done? You said you've been kind of creating your education system from scratch since the 1970s. What are uh, its hallmarks? To be frank, we didn't start for totally from scratch, but actually we formed comprehensive school in Finland during 1970s. The comprehensive school is intended for all not segregating the age group. The parallel system refers to the system that is still present in Germany, for example, in the five first years during your, your education, at the age of 11, that they tell that you're a poor performing student. You're never going to end up 